Hello po, uh, good afternoon, dear teachers and parents. So, I am Teacher Nico. Uh, I am one of the high school coordinators of John Dewey School for Children. Uh, let me gladly share with you some best practices to understand today's teens, also known as generations, as demonstrated and illustrated earlier by Teacher Nico. So first, we need to understand our students. As teachers and parents, we have the best interests of our teenagers in our, in our minds and our hearts. So we try to understand who they are. We try to understand how they learn, how they feel. Overall, we are concerned with their mental, mental health and their overall health. So we know that our students are Gen Zers, as we call them. So they are born between 1997 to 2012. So at present, they are between the ages of 9 to 24. Grades four to high school. In fact, I myself am a part of generations. I, I was born in 1990. So technically, I, I am part of this generation. So Generation Z is the first generation to be born in a world where the internet is available. So according to research, Gen Zers are more educated. They are most likely to pursue college. They welcome change and diversity. They are also progressive, uh, dear parents and teachers. Uh, they, they want an activist government, a government that um, is active in its, in its policies and governance. So to me, as I get to spend time with them and read more about them, I learned that they are more open-minded, more idealistic, and more liberal in their views and thoughts about themselves, their culture, and politics. To give you an example, I would like to show you how our first two weeks of classes go. Here we can see the Gen Zers in action. The first part is when our grade six to grade 10 students attended a global conference hosted by 350.org entitled Asia Solidarity Lab. And in the latter part, our grades four to five students had research and presentation about Greta Her bravery to deliver her intention to support and save the environment that caused the attention of the world leaders at a very young age is very inspiring and motivating. It helped us to be enlightened about the concepts in these areas, in particular, youth activism, climate change. Yesterday and today I feel like um, it's really important to include everyone in this climate crisis and um, to the question how can we include everyone I think education is key Video. So now that we know who our Gen Zers are, let's proceed to how we can form healthy relationships with our kids. Before that, uh, we discuss the nitty gritty of those best practices. Here's a quote from Stephen R. Covey, uh, quoted earlier also by Teacher Rochelle. 
So we must look at the lens through which we see the world as, as well as the world we see, and that the lens itself shapes how we interpret the world. So to ensure that we build long-lasting bridges with our fields, like what Stephen, Stephen R. Covey says, we must see the need to see the world through their eyes and experience the world in their shoes. So seeing the world as a teenager comes with its set of challenges. No? Um, one pressing issue, of course, uh, kung tatanungin po ninyo yung mga teenagers natin, is that a majority of them do not feel safe. Whether it is at home, or at school, in online classes, or even in the presence of the internet. Um, today's environment is very vicious, dear parents and teachers. As a matter of fact, according to UNICEF, almost half of Filipino teenagers in 2019 suffer from cyber violence. To be more specific, 44% of males aged 13 to 17 and 43% of females of the same age admit to being victims of verbal abuse and to a certain extent, or worse extent rather, sexual abuse. So of course, as parents and as teachers, we must provide adequate support to create a student-friendly environment in our families and schools. But how do we do it? So here in John Dewey School for Children, we conduct our online classes via Zoom. We include different activities in our schedule to balance out the different academic activities that we have with self-care, taking care of ourselves. So in every activity we do in class, we prioritize our student safety and security through our different programs in class. So let's go through the different programs. So first, we have student teacher conferences. So we conduct scheduled student teacher conferences regularly to check up on our students and their well-being. So in a Zoom meeting, we gather all students from grades four to six until grade seven to 10 or the upper grades in high school department. We assign different teachers to different breakout rooms where they will facilitate a casual one-on-one -on -one talk with our students where they can express themselves freely without any differences. They, they can talk about anything. And it's actually an opportunity for our teachers to connect with our students um, in a very private way. Yeah. Of course, um, a, pair, a student and a teacher relationship doesn't, um, what we say, doesn't ensure that our students, our, our teenagers would feel safe. That is why for effective change to occur, students need both the school, both the school's intervention and parents' participation. So it's a collaboration between the parents, the students, and the teachers. So as such, we, we as teachers communicate with them on how, on to the parents, of course, to provide proper support for their child's family. So how do we do this in school? So we hold official school events where our parents can participate in, such as the back to school and the quarterly parent orientations, to formally discuss school policies and activities for their children. Throughout the year, we find opportunities to celebrate the family day and provide free parenting webinars to help them educate themselves on the current situation and behavior of their children, like this webinar. So the pandemic has put forth a variety of challenges to our students' online learning. That is why as an institution, we strive to team up with the parents to effectively address issues concerning their, their children. Through their continuous support, the, the school promoted the use of a family media plan to monitor their child's online activities. Since you know, no, it's important that we, uh, we see how much screen time our, our teenagers uh, use in a day. And of course, a healthy food plan to ensure that they will have an healthy, an active rather, an active and So as an educator, we are, our, our responsibility is to create a safe, caring, and high-performing learning environment to encourage excellence and ethics within the school community. So we empower our students to have meaningful distance learning by practicing virtues, like what you see on, on the screen right now. Grounded, uh, they will be practicing these virtues in their everyday lives grounded with the virtues project. So some virtues like assertiveness, uh, being clean, commitment, compassion. So these are virtues that we all want our, our teenagers to have. And um, 
we all incorporate them in our classes. So these virtues are incorporated in our social emotional classes. This program, the social emotional classes, um, help our students in speaking the language on how they should express their thoughts, um, emotions, and exhibit proper behavior without compromising other safety and security. Balance between how they should express themselves freely and not harming other people. But of course, um, these learnings, these virtues must not stay in oneself, but must also be put into action. So in JDSC, we built our community pantry to help others who are in need. We also open donations for our scholar students and share gratitude goodies with our healthcare workers who are fighting the war against COVID-19 in the recent history. So now, once safety and security are made certain in class, we now are sure that uh, I, uh, our, our students will feel, I, I feel safe, I feel comfortable, uh, my school is a safe place. You know, the next step for, for, for the school, for the parents, of course, is to make sure they are feel valued as individuals. But we know that we cannot like box out all of our are, are, are teenagers in just one box. They are all different and they have, they are unique and they have their own needs and they have their own interests. So that's why we go to this question, dear parents and teachers. So as parents and teachers, is it important to connect with our teenagers on a personal level? And if yes, how do you connect with them? Could you type in the chat box for so I would know also, you could help me and we could uh, have this discussion uh, to help each other understand our needs. I'll give you two minutes for your parents and teachers. Thank you Paul, for um, sharing your thoughts on this matter. Really, it is important, dear parents and teachers, that we connect to them on a very personal level by asking and listening to them, um, asking them how they feel. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, communication is always the key in any relationship, and most importantly, in relationships with teenagers. It is, we should be familiar with their interests, uh, what, what they want to do, what, what, what they're interested in. So they will be, of course, it's, it's important because Lana, in this pandemic, it's, it's as if our students, our teenagers feel that they are not, uh, they are often misunderstood or they are often, they often feel under that. So next slide, teacher. So as a generation that is vocal in their thoughts on society's pressing issues, our present day teenagers need opportunities to practice their freedom of speech and fight for what is right. So in John Dewey, we exercise that freedom of speech through our project-based learning classes. Here, I'd like to share a snippet of students in action in our project-based learning classes. This class is composed of students from grades 4 to 6. already have more than a million COVID cases. Countries with more money want to be the first to, to develop a vaccine for the virus. Putting it my classmates will ask. Hello, Pa. Hi, Roan. We have a question. How can you not to be affected by COVID-19 virus while treating an infected patient? Uh, a very good way to protect yourself from the COVID virus and here is my question. What is like to be working in hospital during the coronavirus pandemic? It is scary and exciting at the same time. For that video. So last school year, the high school department was divided into different groups 
based on their interest. These are the climate and nature group, the leadership, the global digital citizenship, human rights, mental health, and economic literacy. So as you can see, these are all topics that would say that you, you would ask yourself, these are unconventional topics that you would talk about in school, uh, these are not math or science, but these are pressing issues that our Gen Zers feel that are important as are, as, as are important in society nowadays. So each group was tasked to research more about these pressing issues of their topics, about the climate change, about human rights. So this would result, uh, their research would result in them sharing important events, recent events, and news with the rest of the community of the high school department. So we would have meaningful discussions on their thoughts on these issues, even politics, on how to save the environment. These topics, um, it encompasses it. it. Uh, this is what I love about PBL. It really is an avenue for our students to talk about what they think is important to them. So this, in this, this manner, we are paving for a generation of critical thinkers in our generation. So these fruitful exchanges of critical thinking would not just end up within the department of the high school. In fact, they would share their learnings with the rest of the school body within JDSE and also outside JDSE. So first of which is with their younger schoolmates. So our school leaders in high school wanted to teach the kids about climate change. And considering that we are still young, they used an avenue for them to have their research, very technical research, packaged in a more understandable manner to their younger uh, fellow class schoolmates. So what they did, they used storytelling to make it fun and easy for them to understand. So that's within JDSC. And outside school, because it's not, it's not just that it's not enough, rather. It's not enough that we that the knowledge that our students know is just kept within the school community. That's why they want to convey their ideas to other members of society. So they had avenues such as a film fest where each group were, were asked to make a short video related to their topic. And they actually organized webinars like these, dear parents and teachers. They all worked together. They, they all formed the committees behind these events from making the letter drafts, inviting and communicating with the speakers, making the posters, and even more. They are all behind. And it culminated last school year in a global virtual conference, which is one of their achievements last school year. So by creating videos and conducting webinars and conferences, the public is made more informed about societal problems that take immediate action. So moreover, in project-based learning classes, we ensure that we stray away from mere memorization of surface knowledge that our teens would not utilize properly in the real world. Tama naman, um, kung titusin niyo, saan ko po gagamitin teacher ang x squared plus 5x plus 6 if a factor ko yun in the real world? Diba? That's one of the questions one of my, uh, most of my students ask. Why is math important? Why is science important? And in PBL, um, we stray away from just saying this is what we have to learn, but uh, we're, we're learning more about things that take immediate action, things that are of greater importance than, than just surface knowledge. So instead, we focus on training 21st century students, such as problem solving in real life situations, collaboration within, uh, between students, and also collaboration between teachers and adults also. Uh, with the students. Um, public speaking, um, they are trained to, um, they're being trained how to speak publicly with confidence, you know, and creativity that all of these skills will help them no matter what career they choose in the future. Right? So Generation Z, like other groups of people, is not just about school and academics. They are people with interests and hobbies that they do out of passion and passion. So as such, so as such, thank you.
So as such, it will be an advantage like that, well, what you have seen earlier, that we do not just tap their academic skills, but we dig deep into their leisure, so-called leisure activities. However, dear parents and teachers, we must take note that we have to ensure that these activities are overall good for their well-being. These are ones that are not detrimental to their physical and mental. These activities must also promote positive and healthy relationships. So subscribing to the theory of multiple intelligences by Howard Gardner, some teenagers might not seem to be adept at cognitive heavy academics, but would excel at so-called extracurricular activities, such as the arts, the performing arts, and sports. In reality, these disciplines are as important as mathematics and the sciences and the engineering, you know. That is why as parents and teachers, we must provide them avenues to practice their talents so that they can hold them. Enrolling them in programs such as the voice, the dance, and acting workshops can help them achieve their dreams. Maybe, you know, you, you will see the next Leia Salonga, you know. Say goodbye, remember me. Don't let it make you cry. For even if I'm far away, I hold you in my heart. So likewise, having our student athletes train rigorously in their respective sports can equip them so they could potentially get the next gold medal for the team. It's just like what Heidelin Diaz did in the recent Olympics. All right, so as you have seen on the, the videos that you have seen on the screen, these are some of our upper grades and high school students showcasing their musical and athletic abilities. So it's important that we hone them holistically, not just in academics, but also in these aspects of their lives. So lastly, understanding the culture created by Generation Z would help us relate to them and form positive, healthy relationships with them. As a generation who grew up with the internet, our teenagers mostly communicate with each other and the world on certain social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Common popular interests within social groups would be technology, music, social media influencers, books, movies, and TV series. As adults, these are effective avenues because these are we could relate with them through these platforms. We could use this to engage them and relate to them. Of course, with the goal of positively equipping them for a better future. A disclaimer, however, is that we must also be vigilant of their interactions and behavior on online platforms. That is why teaching them to be responsible digital citizens both at home and at school is imperative at this point. This would result in lessening insensitive, racist, sexist, and inappropriate remarks and behavior.
And that concludes my short presentation on understanding our tech-savvy teenagers. We hope you could share your experiences with our teenagers as well in the chat. Thank you for listening.